What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sava Tech once again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the GTX 1660 Ti from EVGA. This particular model is the XC Black, which means it's basically a three slot card with a single fan. For comparison, we're putting it up against a Sapphire RX 590 Nitro Plus Edition. It is eight gigabytes of VRAM and was kind of the king of the budget range before the 1660 Ti. Keep in mind, we don't know what's going on with pricing on the AMD side, so things could shift quite significantly and these could be not even in the same ballpark price range wise. But without further ado, let's hop into it. To start things off, let's talk about the test bench. It's a Ryzen 7 2700 overclocked to four gigahertz with 3200 megahertz memory, 16 gigabytes of it. We have the games running on a one terabyte solid state drive and the OS running on a 256 gigabyte NVMe drive with two separate NVMe drives, uh, one with the AMD drivers and one with the Nvidia drivers on the latest Windows 10 build. We are a couple revisions behind drivers as this testing was done a couple weeks ago live on my Twitch channel, which we have now moved to DLive. You can check me out at DLive uh, under the username Blind Run. Links will be in the description. Make sure you come on over there. That being said, everything else on the system would be as expected we have a nice 850 watt gold rated power supply to make sure we don't have any power limitations or issues on that front and the motherboard is the msi b450 uh, atx model box is probably around here somewhere Taking a look at the 1660 Ti, it has 1536 CUDA cores. Its boost clock is advertised at 860 megahertz and frequently goes above that depending on the model. Now, this is the boost clock specified value for the EVGA in particular. It is PCIe 3.0 and the memory is six gigabytes of GDDR6 with a 192 bit bus with a memory clock of 12,000 megahertz, which comes out to memory bandwidth being about 288 gigabit per second, or gigabytes per second, excuse me. Now talking about the rest of the card going around it, we already talked about the fan. It's a single cooler solution, and there is no real, I guess there's three copper pipes, uh, but they don't stick outside the card or anything like that. They just run right through and then lots of fins. It's a, it's a different design. It, it, it almost comes across as a little cheap, but it's a hefty card because it is a three slot card. There are two slot card options, at least from Zotac that I just played around with, and that has like a two fan, uh, two slot card design, and that might be preferable depending on what kind of build you're going for. Aside from that, the outputs are pretty typical. What you would expect you have, well, I should say typical. The output types are typical. Here's the disappointment though. So on this particular card, we have a single uh, display port with a single HDMI and a single DVI-D. Unfortunately, when we're talking about this card, we only have one of each input type and you would expect being three slots that they could fit a little bit more IO on it, which is very curious to say the least powering it is an eight pin pcie adapter and we'll go over the benchmarks now okay so starting off with synthetics we have fire strike and the 1660 ti scored 16218 on the gpu side of things while the rx 590 stayed super duper close at 16194 and one of the things you'll notice with the 1660 ti in particular especially at where the drivers are at right now is it seems to favor directx 12 pretty considerably and you'll see that here in this next synthetic benchmark where in time spy it absolutely wiped the floor with a 30 percent improvement over the rx 590 with a 6310 versus a 4615 from the rx 590 part of this is primarily due to like i said it being dx12 now nvidia was very clear about this that it was programmed or what developed i should say i don't know why i said programmed 
Anyways, it's developed primarily for newer technologies, i.e. DirectX 12 and so on and so forth. And so while it is not getting like the latest technologies from NVIDIA with RTX support, DLSS support and so on, it is going to favor the newer APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan. Finally, we have Superposition for the Synthetics where it scored a 4,994 versus the RX 590's 3,752. All that's well and good, but how does it look in real world gaming? Well, we have Far Cry New Dawn at 1080p tested and its average FPS was 84 versus the 72 average on the RX 590. For Far Cry New Dawn bumping up to 1440p, we saw an average of 66 FPS on the 1660 Ti versus the 54 FPS on the RX 590. So it is what I would say pretty much 1440p capable. Now 1440p high frame rate, not as much, but that 1440p 60 FPS is looking pretty promising. Now, Metro Exodus at 1080p at Ultra, and I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing Metro Exodus at 1080p Ultra for any tests, because uh, you'll see this chart and it's a little ridiculous. The 1660 Ti had an average of 43 FPS versus the RX 590's 36 frames per second. That being said, the mins are outside of playable on both cards, unfortunately. And I think I'm going to have to work on doing tweaking and comparing both the RX 590 versus the 1660 Ti more in a setting of tweaking um, performance to see wh which would play a playable performance is what I should state there. Now, finally, we did do some real world gaming in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p and 1440p. The 1660 Ti just it smashes in DirectX 12 of course no RTX in this in this format but at high settings with an average of 93 frames per second while the RX 590 had an average of 71. Finally at 1440p we did get over that sweet spot of 60 FPS on the 1660 Ti with 62 specifically and on the RX 590 we were looking at 49 frames per second. Now where are my disappointments with the 1660 Ti performance in general? Well here's one thing that, that that's a, a little different than when you're looking at cards in the past. If you're looking at like a 1080 Ti and 1440p performance, you could kind of see almost like a doubling of frame rate going up or down from like 1440p to uh, that 1080p resolution. And for a lot of esports gamers, getting that that high 144 frames per second to 240 frames per second uh, at 1080p is beneficial. This card seems to struggle to get above 100 FPS uh, uh, even at 1080p but then performs exceptionally well at 1440p in the 60 FPS range and I, I need to do some further testing so I think we're going to look into that separately. If we're looking at a good buy right now for gaming of course the 1660 Ti coming in around that $250 mark is pretty enticing. Uh, I think I picked this one up for $269 in particular uh, right when it came out. So that's pretty cool. If you guys are interested in my D live, be sure to go check it out. We're at 50 followers right now, reaching out to you guys on YouTube to get us to that 200 followers on D live so that we can go ahead and get our affiliation or partnership or whatever they call it at D live and we can get some more Lino and go donate all of that out. Apparently you also do have to lock Lino. I'll be making a separate video on D live in general. I just like you guys to go ahead and check it out because we're going to be doing some giveaways over there at 200 followers. We're going to have Tom Clancy's the division two. And then after that, I have some plans to give away some graphics cards. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Come on over. Other than that, I will see you next Tuesday.